Welcome, I'm Jace, and I'm gonna be showing you how to use the Perforce integration in Unreal Engine 5, as well as talking about some of the new features that are specifically relevant to source control that were released in Unreal Engine 5. So I'm going to assume that you already have a Perforce server and you know how to create a workspace on your computer. If you don't, go check out some videos about that. But once you have that set up, Come back here and we have our Unreal project in our workspace on our computer and that's connected to source control. If I pull up P4V here, I can see in P4V, I have a workspace here called J Lindgren Virtual Studio and this is on my local workstation. And you can see I've got an Unreal project here and that's what I have opened. So now in Unreal, I need to set up source control. There's a couple ways you can get to this. Down here in the bottom right, there's this source control menu, or up in tools, you can go to connect to source control and you can also get those same settings here. Either one does the same thing. It'll pop up this window where you choose your source control provider. We're choosing Perforce. And in here, you're going to put in the address of your server. In my case, this is another computer on my local network running on Windows, so I don't have SSL on this. It's not a secure connection because it's only on my local network. If I had set this up on a Linux server or if I had used the Enhanced Studio Pack to set this up on AWS or Azure or if I used the image on DigitalOcean or a number of other places that are more publicly accessible, I would have SSL, which I would put that SSL colon at the beginning. If I just installed a server locally on my same computer that I'm using, then I could just do localhost. But in any case, the default port is 1666. So I'll just put back in that address. And then for username, this is your username. Mine is Jay Lindgren. And then you're gonna to wanna to choose a workspace. If you click this dropdown, it will go and look at what folder you're in and see if your server has a workspace for your user at that location. In my case, it does here. It's just called jlindgren underscore virtual studio. And then I hit accept settings. Now you can see down here, my connection was successful. And down here, my source control now has this little green check. And up in the tools menu, under source control, I now have these other options here as well. And we will get to those in just a second. An important thing to understand about the way Perforce works is by default, in your workspace, all of the files on your computer are read-only. Just to demonstrate this to you, if I go into my local workspace folder and I look at any of the files in here, any of the folders, so for example, I'll look at my uProject file. If I go and look at the properties, I will see down here this is checked as read-only. And so that means if I try to save this file right now, my operating system won't let me. It is helping you to avoid making changes to a file that source control doesn't know about. But if you're just having to manually go into P4V here and before working on anything, you say, I need to check this out. So now I can make changes to it. That can be tedious. That can be a pain. So the integration with Unreal helps do that for you. As an example, if I come in here and here, let's take this light up here and I'm gonna move it down. And you'll notice down here, it pops up and says, hey, one file needs to be checked out. Okay, let me check that out. And then I can see what it is. In this case, it's an asset called Trackerless Studio, which is the map file here. And you can see type is level. And I can also see the path where this is inside of my game. And I'll just say, yep, check out selected. So now that has both checked it out in Perforce and it has made that file writable. And if I go down here and I say view change lists inside my default change list now, I've got both of these files. So this one is the one I just checked out from Unreal. And this U project is the one that I checked out manually in P4V here, which is this one that I did. And if I hit refresh here, I'll see them both here as well. So you can see that those they do the same thing. This just makes it a lot easier because you can do more things from inside of Unreal Engine. One of the cool features that was added in Unreal Engine 5 is the ability to have multiple different change lists. So let's say, for example, I was making these changes for one task and I'm simultaneously doing something for a different task. I can hit new change list here and I'll enter a description and I'll say moving lights and I'll just hit okay. 
And now I have this change list number 26. That just happens to be the next available number of change list on my server. And then I'm gonna take this change that I made to the map file where I moved that light down and I can just drag that into change list 26. And the reason I would do this is that then I can submit these separately. So I can come here and just right click on this and say, I wanna submit this change list or I can submit this one and I can have different notes for those and can put all those files together in a group. Now, maybe I made some other changes to different things and I put them all in this change list. I can submit that change list and submit them all at once. Now you may notice in this menu here where it says validate change list, this is another feature that they added. And what this does is it goes and it checks to make sure that all of the files that you have checked out in Unreal Engine have actually been saved. And I know that seems like a small little thing, but it's actually a pretty big deal if you've checked them out, but you haven't actually saved them. Then when you submit this, you're just submitting whatever actual file is on your computer, not actually your latest changes because you haven't saved those. So let's, uh, let's see if we can test that out here. So I'm going to move this light a bit more and I'm not going to press save. And now I'm going to come here and say validate change list failed to validate the change list. And if I hit show message log and I scroll down to the bottom here, it'll say two errors. This change list contains unsaved modifications. Please save to proceed. And then changes that aren't valid at the world partition level. So that I think is just because this is an older project. So let's come along here and see what happens. If I just go save all, great. And then I come here and validate again. Now it validated correctly. So that's just an example of how they've built this tool to help you avoid some common mistakes. So then I can come along here and submit this change list, which will automatically say change list validated here, which is nice. And also this change list description is the one that I put here. If I want to change that before I submit it, I actually just have to do that here where I edit change list and I'll say moving lights and updated the project. Then I can come here and submit this change list. Boom, then that will send it to source control. I'm not gonna do that though right now because something else I wanna show you is this. You'll notice I moved this light and what if I didn't want to do that? I wanna undo that change. There's a couple ways I could do that. One is if I go to my content drawer down here and I actually find this map file, which in my case here is under maps and this one I can see the red checkbox means that I have this file checked out what I can do here is if I right click I have source control options now because I'm connected to source control and I could check in which means I'll submit just this one file instead of that whole change list I could look at the history I can diff against depot and that means I want to see how this file is different from what's on the server currently so let's check that and see now, this isn't super meaningful to me as a human <laughs> to read this, but what's cool about this is that normally you can't see inside the data in a UMAP file or a UAsset file. But because of this integration, Unreal is creating a text version of this essentially and allowing me to see what it used to be and what it is now. So I'm going to close that but I can at least see there was a change. And now I can go into here and revert. What this will do is, as it says in the tooltip, it reverts the asset to the state it was before it was checked out. So let's try that. I'm gonna hit revert and it wants me to confirm it. So I'll check this. I can also hit file name and it'll select everything if I was trying to revert multiple things at once. And I'm gonna hit revert. And you'll notice that it also reloaded that scene and now that light is back where it was. And if I come along here, I see there's no red checkbox. And if I go and view my change lists, I'll notice in here, that's no longer in the list because it's been reverted. I can also do that right from here inside the change list view. For example, I right click on this and I'll say revert files. I can also say revert unchanged. Say I checked out a bunch of files, but I only ended up changing one of them. I can come along, select this whole thing and just revert unchanged. In this case, I haven't actually changed my U project file. So it just went away because there were no changes there. And similarly, I could come along here and say, actually, I'm not doing this change list anymore. Let me just delete this empty change list. 
it'll only let you do that when it's empty. So you've got to remove the other things or move them to other change lists before it will let you do that. So far, we've been talking about checking out files and making our changes and then submitting those back to version control to our server. But in this case, other people might also be making changes and we need a way to get those. So in this case, let's imagine I've been working and I go into my content drawer. And if I look at this map that we're on, you'll notice that right now this Trackerless Studio map has an exclamation point on it. And what that means is that there's a newer version of this that someone else has made that I don't have. So first of all, if I were to come here to source control to try to, you'll notice I don't even have an option to check this out because I don't have the latest. But it does open up this option that says sync. And what that's going to do is get whatever that latest version is from the server. I could also do this at the folder level. So for example, I could come all the way back here and on my content folder, I could just hit sync here and sync this entire folder and everything in it. So in this case, let's try that just to make sure we have the latest versions of everything. I hit sync and now you'll notice once it's done that, it's now reloading everything just in case any of them changed. If I had just synced the one file, I wouldn't have to wait as long for this because it would just be updating the one file. So that is one thing to keep in mind. And once it finishes syncing, you'll notice that now that light has been moved down. So someone else had made that change and now I got it. And maybe I'm working on something else over here or something related to it. And if we go back now in content, virtual studio kit maps, I'll see now that my tracker list studio no longer has that exclamation point, And now I have the option to check it out. So just so that you know, you can get those updates from in here and also visually in the content drawer, you're able to see if there are any that you don't have the latest version of, because maybe you don't want to get the latest version of it right now because you're focused on something else, but at least you know that's something that you can update later. Another important thing to understand about the way Unreal works and the way that source control works, especially when you're working alongside other people, is that because files like .umap, .uasset are binary files, if two different people made changes to the same file, there's no way to merge those two changes later. You would just have to pick one of them and then reapply the other changes that the other person had made to that same file. Unlike a text file where two people could write different lines and you're able to merge those together using source control. That's not something you can do with binary files just because of the way those files work. Now, because I've set my type map properly, and if you haven't done that, I recommend checking out the Helix Core Plus Game Engine page on perforce.com for instructions about that. There's also some instructions in the Unreal documentation about how to set up your type map in Perforce. So to help avoid that kind of conflict and people potentially losing work, Perforce has the ability to set certain types of files to automatically lock when one person has them checked out. So as an example, if I come here, go to source control and check out, you'll see I have the red check to say it's checked out. But if I go into P4V and take a look and hit refresh, I'll notice that not only do I have the red check, but also this little padlock to say that this file has exclusive checkout. Now, if another user comes along and tries to check out this file, so say they also made a change to that map file in Unreal, and it says, hey, you should check this out. And when they try, they'll get an error message saying this can't be checked out because someone else has it. And if they come into P4V and highlight over it, in this tooltip, they will see who has it checked out. So in their case, they would see this is checked out by Jay Lindgren. So then they could message me and say, hey, I thought I was supposed to work on this file. Are you done with your changes yet? Instead of us both making changes and then one of us having to lose work and we'd have to redo someone's work. We've seen how the Unreal integration makes it nice and easy to remind me to check files out. So if I move this desk here, for example, I'll get a notice that I need to check out the file, which in this case is the level file, is the map file itself, because that's what stores the position data for that desk. And I'll hit check out. Great, same thing if I made a change to a material or to a U asset or a blueprint or anything else in here. 
However, if I'm doing a lot of changes, it can be a pain to have to go through that menu every single time. It's nice because I see more clearly what it's doing, but maybe I don't want to have to do that. So what we can do then is if we go up into edit, our editor preferences, and I'll just type up in here, source control. And you'll see in the source control settings here under loading and saving, so you can also get to it that way. There's this automatically check out on asset modification. If I check this and close my settings panel. So now if I were to move this desk, you'll see down here packages automatically checked out. And if I go and I check my change lists, I will see here that my map file was automatically checked out right when I made that change, even before I saved it in this case. For certain other things like materials, that might not happen until you hit save, but in any case, it saves me that extra step of having to check those files out. So again, there's pros and cons to you lose a little bit of visibility of what you're doing, but maybe it saves you time if you're modifying a lot of different assets and don't want to have to individually check each of them out. Now, the way that Unreal works and stores data, the information about, for example, these lights, things like the geometry of it, the textures on it, the materials, things like that, those are all stored in separate files. So for example, if I went browse to asset and I could see this ring light here and I could come in here and I could also look at the file itself, I'll bring it up in my file explorer. Then I can see that this .uasset file for that light stores that information about this light object. However, where it's located in the level is not stored in the object itself, it's stored in the level. So you'll notice when I move this and I hit save, I'm not having to check out any of these files. I'm just checking out this, the world, the level file. And this uh, can be a difficulty. It means that you could only have one person at a time making these sorts of changes. Now, the way in the past that you would have to deal with this is you would, you would take a look at your levels and you'd have a persistent level and you'd use level streaming to have sub levels. So I'd have one sub level maybe that has all of my lights on it and another one that would have all of my screens and the main set, and then another one that has any particle effects or any things like that, so that then each user can be checking out that whole level. But still, it involves a lot of pre-planning, having to manually move things between levels, and that could get hard to manage. So one of the big features for source control in Unreal Engine 5 is their feature called one file per actor. And what this does, is it makes it so instead of the level file itself storing all the data about where every single asset is in the scene, instead, each file has its own individual file that that world file references to tell where it's located, what its rotation is, its scale, that kind of information. So that when I change that one file's position, I'm only checking out one file related to that exact object. It means that other people could be coming over here and moving these objects around at the same time that I'm doing stuff with these lights over here and we're not interfering with each other's changes. And if they did try to move a light that I had already moved, then they would get that notification of, hey, Jace has this locked. He has it checked out. You shouldn't be messing with this. So again, helps you avoid those conflicts, but makes it a lot easier for multiple people to be working on the same level at the same time. To demonstrate this, I'm going to come back here and I'm going to revert this level again. And I have noticed that sometimes in Unreal, when I revert something, it doesn't immediately reload that like it should. I'm hoping this gets fixed in the future, but I just double clicked on this trackerless studio again and that prompted it to reload. And now you can see that went back to its previous position there. So there's a couple ways to work with one file per actor. The first way is that it is enabled by default whenever you use world partition, which is another one of the cool new features in UE5. So you'll find that pretty much all of the new template projects in UE5 already have that enabled. And so everything by default has one file per actor already. But if you don't have that, you can also come in here to your editor preferences. I mean, you could just turn on 
world partition, which is probably their recommended way to do it. But you can also, under experimental settings, you can manually enable it. And so that comes down here under tools, this enable one file per actor. And I can turn that on just like that. So now that I have enabled one file per actor, I can enable that individually for certain assets in my scene. So for example, I'll go back to this light again, and you can see these four are in the group. Each quarter of it is its own asset that's been combined. And if I come down here under actor, down here under advanced, packaging mode. By default, it's internal, which means in the map file, and I can change that to external, which now is going to store it in a separate file. Now this says packages automatically checked out. So let's go and see what's happening here. So if I go into my default change list, this world file, this UMAP asset, that's checked out. But if I come up here and I hit save all, and I refresh, you'll see here that I now have these extra files that are this, it's the, the name of the file and then colon persistent level. That's kind of how they'll show up in this description in terms of where they are. And what this is, is that we have this group actor, which helps to control the position of this whole group. And then also individually, each object inside of that, which is this ring light, one, two, three, four, each have their own file as well. So let's go ahead and submit these changes first so that we can start working with them. So I'm just gonna submit this and we'll give a description. And I'm gonna say uh, changed lower light to one file per actor. And this automatically validated my change list, so that's cool. I'm gonna hit submit. Great. So now I have nothing checked out because I just submitted everything and I can come back here and see that in my change list. I'll hit refresh, nothing, nothing here. And now if I move this down, package is automatically checked out. And now if I go into source control and I hit refresh, and now what I see here, you'll notice that map file is not one of those. And if I come over into P4V, just to verify this and I hit refresh, I'll notice that UMAP file here that originally was locked when I moved that file and checked it out now is not because instead it's just these individual files over here that are under virtual studio content, and then this external actors folder. You can see that particular map has its own folder. And then inside of here, this is not meant to be edited and, and really worked on by humans, especially if you imagine every single asset having this. But that's what's great is you just let Unreal deal with all of that. And now I can come in here and make changes to uh, individual assets in my scene, moving them around, rotating them, scaling them, and other people can do that for other assets, and we're not worrying about overwriting each other's changes, and we're not worrying about locking files for each other. I hope you enjoyed this whirlwind tour of setting up and using version control in Unreal Engine 5, as well as looking at some of the new features that make working with Perforce in Unreal Engine even more powerful. You can download Helix Core and use it for free with up to five users at perforce.com.